These boxes represent orbitals and each half arrow represents one electron. Underneath these boxes are letters which will tell you the type of orbital and the number tells you which quantum shell the orbital is in. To fill up the orbitals with electrons, we need to first learn the three rules of the game. The first rule is that we need to fill the electrons starting from the lowest energy orbital onwards. This is also known as the Aufbau principle. So the electrons will be filled from the 1s to 2s to 2p to 3s to 3p to 4s to 3d to 4p and so on. Notice that there is this part here which does not follow the pattern. That's because the 4s orbital has a lower energy level than the 3d orbitals. Hence, the 4s orbitals will be filled first. And just like what you've seen earlier, the second rule is that the half arrow electrons must be of opposite spins and cannot be facing the same way. This is also known as the Pauli exclusion principle. And the third and final rule will be Hans rule, which states that the orbitals of these boxes must be occupied singly by electrons of parallel spins before pairing can occur, because this will help to minimize the inter-electronic repulsion between the electrons. With that, let's now fill in the electron in box diagram for oxygen. Oxygen has a total of 8 electrons, so we would expect to have 8 half arrows in these boxes. So, we will first fill up the electrons from the lowest energy 1s orbital, followed by the 2s orbital. At this stage, we have already filled up 4 electrons, so we have 4 electrons left to fill up in the 2p subshell. To do that, we fill it in like this. 1, 2, 3. And the last one goes back to the first 2p orbital where there can finally be electron pairing. What about vanadium? Vanadium has 23 electrons. So this is how we fill it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. At this stage, we have filled up 18 electrons, which gives us 5 electrons left to complete the diagram. Pro tip, you can use bracket AR to represent this whole thing, as argon has the exact same electronic configuration with 18 electrons. Remember that the 4s orbital has a lower energy level compared to the 3d orbitals? So, we will fill up the 4s orbitals first, before filling up the 3d orbitals like this. And this is also how it will look like without using the argon shortcut. But not all elements or atoms play by the 3 golden rules. Copper and chromium have their own set of rules. Copper has 29 electrons, and we will expect the electrons to fill up the 4s orbitals first, right? Well, not for copper. Instead, electrons fill up the 3d orbitals first, followed by the 4s subshell, because the fully filled 3d subshell is more stable due to the symmetrical charge distribution around the metal center. For chromium, it has 24 electrons, and we will expect initially the electrons to fill up the 4s orbitals first, but instead, the electrons will be spread across the 3d and 4s orbitals evenly because this will minimize the inter-electronic repulsion between the electrons, hence making this configuration much more stable. But what about ions? For cations, the electrons are first removed from the highest energy orbital onwards. So to determine the electron in box diagram for the aluminium cation, let's first draw the electron in box diagram for a normal aluminium atom. Then. The 3 plus here means that 3 electrons need to be removed to form the cation. So we will remove the first electron from the 3p orbital first, and the remaining 2 from the 3s subshell like this. So this is how the electron in box diagram will look like for the aluminium cation. For anions, filling up the electron in box diagram is just the same as how we will fill up for a normal atom, by adding to the next available orbital. In the case of sulfur, same thing, let's first fill in the diagram for a normal sulfur atom. Then, the 2 minus here means that we need to add 2 electrons to these 2 vacant 3b orbitals to make it a sulfur anion. 